First of all, I have to thank my Grand Prairie family for being here. It was really great to see you up close. Thank you. I have, uh, of course, always lived in the great state of Texas. Are some Texans out there today? Uh, uh, Texas is in the United States. If you're from America, let's hear it from you. Yeah. Come on. All right. Thought I'd get you clapping before I even started, but all right. Asking me to describe in five minutes what I've learned through my experiences in AVID and how it's changed me as a teacher and as a person would be like asking me to walk into the Library of Congress and pull out my favorite page, but I'll do my best. I was here in 2007 as a brand new teacher, hadn't even started working and selecting a group for our class that would start in the fall. Any of you here in that same boat? You know that feeling? Okay, take a deep breath. You've got six years until you're gonna be right here, so good luck with that. You see, I'm not just an avid teacher. I am an avid disciple. I have seen the miracles, and I believe. <laughs> I keep two old textbooks on my desk. Both of them are algebra books. I taught algebra for eight years. But these books are special. One belonged to my mother, and the other belonged to my father. And you see, my mother dropped out of high school not long after she took algebra. And my father finished high school, but he had never been through very many rigorous courses, and the work when he tried to go to college was just too much in supporting his young family. But I keep these books to remind me of two things. First of all, algebra has not changed much in 60 years. <laughs> but secondly, education must change. We still have far too many students like my parents who fell between the cracks and got lost, and that must change. I believe that one of the most frustrating things in the world is being told you have to do something and not being told how. But what's even more frustrating than that is coming up with a great way and figuring out how to do it and then being told you did it wrong. One of the great injustices I think we have in education is that we tell our students to take notes, to study. They should work harder. They should stand up for their values. They should solve problems. But we never tell them how. And when they struggle and find some way to survive and, and come up with a solution, Sometimes they get shot down and told they did it wrong. When I first heard about AVID, one of the things that excited me the most is that with AVID, we teach students how to be successful. We give them the tools that they need, and we show them how to use them. We give them a fighting chance. Because you see, the answer is not to take the kids out of the challenging classes who are finding it to be a challenge. The answer is to give those kids the tools and the support and the help they need so that they can be successful in the challenging classes. <laughs> However, I have to tell you what's kept me an avid all these years has not been the strategies, it's been the stories. It's been time that I've spent talking to students who have so little hope at times but are still looking for somebody to give them a hand. I've looked in the tear-filled eyes of a young girl whose mother was pressuring her to drop out of school and become a dancer because the family needed the money. I've hugged the young man who was breaking down under the stress of trying to keep up with his grades while he watched his brothers and sisters in the afternoon and had to go work every evening. But I've watched that young man open a letter from a university that gave him a reason to keep going. I've watched that young lady walk across the stage and hold a piece of paper in her hand that no one else in her family had ever held before. That's the stories that push me to do more. You see, when I look in the faces of my avid classes, sometimes I can imagine that I see my parents sitting there and I can tell them, you have other options. You can make decisions now that will change your life. Even if your family started sooner than you expected, if your situation seemed dire, no matter what, there is hope. There are opportunities. And there is more than one ending to the book of your life because it hasn't even been written yet. 
so don't let anyone else write it for you. And I think about those old algebra books, and I say, is this the best way to capture their minds and to challenge their spirits? My parents were born in a time before televisions, before microwaves, before computers, before cell phones, before the internet. My students refer to this as the dark ages. <laughs> Today, the push of a button can bring the whole world into your hand, literally. Technology has made this a small world after all. But has it changed our classrooms? Students don't need us to provide them with information. They have plenty of information, more books than they could read in a lifetime at their disposal 24 hours a day. What they need is someone to stand beside them and help them make sense of all that information. They need someone to help them understand what truth is, what is logic, how do we place value, and we can do that in so many great ways with Socratic seminars, with philosophical chairs, so many other ways. We can help our students sort out the wave of information that is flooding them in the highway of life right now. We have so many educational tools, so many medias that are available to us that teachers just two generations ago would have killed for. But we're gonna have to really embrace the giant learning curve that is ahead for all of us as things change rapidly. When I take the fascinating worlds of math and science and history and literature and I present them to my students by giving them some pieces of paper and asking them to write down my ramblings over the next hour, I have stolen the joy of education from those students. And frankly, I think you should be arrested for crimes against learning or something like that. You see, AVID is about changing lives. There's the mission statement in three words. AVID changes lives. It changes students' lives. It changes teachers' lives. It will change your life. Whole families' lives, the lives of generations of families, will be forever changed when you intervene and show a child that you care, and that education can open doors. If I can virtually take my students any place in the world and communicate with anyone from any country, how can I not? If I can engage them in personal interactions with their peers and their teachers and cause them to evaluate and analyze the world around them, how can I not? If I can expand their vision to see that education is not an obstacle to overcome, it is a ladder to climb, then how can I not? So when my students ask me, why do you teach AVID? I look around the rooms and I see in their eyes the eyes of my parents, and I visualize their futures and what it could be, and I say, how can I not? Thank you and God bless you as you change the world. <laughs>